So what if we actually have general purpose CPUs like the one in your phone or computer completely wrong? For decades, we've built processors around a controlled flow model, shuffling data between caches, memory, and compute, which burns energy at every step. But what if you could change that? What if you built a chip where data moves the program, not the other way around? It could still run C++. And that's the idea behind a new startup called Efficient Computer, who are announcing the Electron E1. Now the numbers seem somewhat insane, so I spent some time analyzing what the company is trying to promise here, and if it's actually worth what it says on the tin. It's a clean sheet processor with a custom ISA and compiler stack, which are usually red flags, but it's built upon a spatial data flow architecture. Efficient say it's not a DSP, it's not a VLIW engine, and it's not an AI accelerator in disguise. This is apparently a very general purpose CPU, one designed for power constrained systems where every joule of energy counts, such as the embedded market. The company behind it claims up to 100 times better energy efficiency than ARM's best embedded cores. Wow. They now have working silicon, soon to be available to developers. Let's take a look at the details. So the embedded market doesn't usually get architectural breakthroughs. Most chips in this space are small, low-power microcontrollers built around designs that are decades old. And that's for two reasons. First is that those designs are tried and true. But second is that those designs end up in systems that have to have replaceable parts 20 years out into the future. Nonetheless, each year new features are needed into the embedded market and those old designs are fundamentally constrained. That's starting to become a problem, partly because of that buzzword AI, but also because of power. As we push more features into smaller and smaller devices, such as robotics, wearables, remote sensors, or industrial controls, the power matters most. Developers want more performance, better responsiveness, and yes, even local AI inference, but power budgets simply haven't changed. You still need whatever you're designing to last for days, weeks, or even years on a battery. Now my watch, for example, this one came out in 2019, and it can run a week on a battery, relying on mobile phone for cellular. Now in most of the videos on this channel, I'll explain that this could be improved by optimizing software, by squeezing more from silicon nodes. Surely a three nanometer design is better than whatever is in here. But in this video, I'm going to talk about efficient computers E1 chip, as they are betting that software and nodes aren't enough. The fundamental architecture is what is holding us back. Now CPUs actually execute code by moving data around, and in some cases spend more energy on moving that data than actually computing with it. Architectures often focus on power per operation, which doesn't often include the moving data part, which means even simple tasks could burn more power than they should. When you're in a power constrained system, like an embedded system, that's the bottleneck. So that's why Efficient have designed the Electron E1, a new ground up general purpose CPU designed to tackle that head on. The key here is that phrase, general purpose. It's not dumbing things down or locking developers into fixed function blocks like a DSP, but apparently rethinking the whole execution model of a CPU. Their claim is that you can get 10 to 100 times more useful work per unit of energy while still writing normal C++ or Rust code. Now if that's true, it opens up a very different class of application. Not in hyperscale data centers, but in the places where compute or power is needed most. Now, when most people hear low power chip or embedded CPU, they probably think about ARM's Cortex-M or maybe a RISC-V core running bare metal firmware. The model is simple, a small processor executing step-by-step -step instructions, fetching data from memory and pushing results back again. Efficient computer here isn't trying to beat them by doing the same thing better. They're arguing the whole model needs to change. Their architecture is simply just called Fabric, and it's based on a spatial data flow architecture. Instead of moving instructions through a centralized pipeline, the Electron E1 pins instructions to specific compute nodes, called tiles, and lets the data flow between them. When all the required inputs arrive at a single node, that node fires. There's no program counter and no global scheduler. We'll get to exactly the architecture in a second, but they claim it's a native execution model that lets them cut huge amount of energy overhead that typical CPUs waste just moving data around. 
And just to be clear, because I know there will be a few experts in the audience asking if this is exactly VLIW or a DSP, Efficient says it's not a VLIW, that's a very long instruction word, where you would bundle instructions and hope the compiler fills the slots. They claim it's not a DSP either, where you hardwire fixed kernels and hand tune everything. It's also not an accelerator for one domain, like AI. Efficient says this is a real general purpose processor, able to run standard code, just using a very different model underneath. That's the claim, and they have work in silicon, but we've seen radical architectures ship before and still fall short. So the question isn't just whether it works, it's whether it works efficiently enough to justify doing things differently. So here's an image of what exactly looks like under the hood. Electron E1 is built out of a grid of small compute tiles, and each one is capable of executing basic operations. By this we mean math, logic, and memory accesses. But unlike a traditional CPU, where the program counter steps through instructions and dispatches them down a pipeline, here the instructions are already placed. You compile your program, your standard C++ program, into a data flow graph. For those of you unfamiliar with the concept of a data flow graph, just imagine it like a logic flow diagram, where each box is an operation that might have different outputs, and the flow is laid out using the tiles on the processor. The idea is that any tile can compute at any time, but it waits for the data inputs to arrive. For example, if there's a multiplication, once the two numbers are in the local registers for that tile for that multiply, it does the operation automatically and then sends the result where it needs to go. Once the input data for that node arrives, the tile fires. That's it. There's no scheduler deciding what to run next, no buffering of instructions, no dynamic issue logic, just distributed, statically routed connections between tiles and instructions that wake up when their operands are ready. Of course, that introduces other challenges. Chips can only fit a certain amount of tiles, so what if the program graph is larger than the chip can hold? Efficient handles this through a pipeline reconfiguration. The compiler breaks the graph into chunks, and the chip can dynamically load new configurations as execution processes. Each tile has a small cache of recent configurations, so in cases where loops or patterns repeat, it doesn't have to reload everything from scratch every time. Now the interconnect between tiles is a statically rooted and bufferless design, decided at compile time. As I said, there's no flow control here, or retry logic. If two data paths collide, the compiler has to resolve it at compile time. That keeps the fabric extremely power efficient, but shifts more responsibility to the toolchain. Now relying on the compiler to be perfect has had its issues in traditional computing, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out here. As of their first release candidate chip, Efficient E1 also supports 32-bit floating point, and that's a meaningful milestone in the embedded space. A lot of low-power architectures only support integer workloads, or just assume everything can be done in fixed-point math. When speaking with the Efficient CEO, he said that it was as necessary part of the design as the architecture can and will scale. It's important here to highlight that this is not software-emulated data flow, i.e. it's not a traditional CPU emulating this way of computing. The hardware is designed to be the data flow engine. Now whether that's flexible enough to handle real-world embedded software, or whether it creates too many edge cases, this isn't clear yet. But architecturally, this is about as far from conventional CPU design as you can get while still calling it general purpose. That supposedly is where the power benefits lie. Now all of this would be mostly academic if it couldn't actually run real code. But that's the claim here. Electron E1 uses standard tools. The compiler front end is based on Clang and supports both C++ and Rust. Efficient also says it supports integration with machine learning frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX, although it's not clear yet how much, of the, how much manual intervention of those is needed. The toolchain itself is called EFFCC, and until now it was only accessible through a sandbox compiler playground on Efficient's website. With the release of the E1, they're making it fully downloadable, which means developers can now integrate it directly into their workflows and compile programs to target real silicon. The way it works is that EFFCC takes the regular code and lowers it into Fabric's spatial data flow model. It handles the hard parts, such as the decomposing of the instruction graph, the mapping of the operations to tiles, generating configurations, and managing reconfiguration pipelines. In a traditional compiler, those decisions happen dynamically at runtime. Here, they're resolved statically at compile time. That's part of where the efficiency comes from, as I'll say again, and it means the compiler has to be pretty intelligent. Leaning into what I said before about magic compilers, 
a lot of the secret sauce is going to be in that tool chain. But the promise from Efficient here is that developers don't have to learn a new mental model to get started. You write C++, the compiler handles the mapping, and it's going to be interesting to see if something doesn't map cleanly or the compile hits a corner case. If the developer will get visibility into what went wrong, we don't know yet. It does mean that adoption will likely depend on how robust that tooling really is once developers start stress testing it in the wild. So let's loop back and talk about performance, specifically around energy efficiency. Because Efficient claims that the Electron E1 delivers between 10 and 100 times better energy efficiency than, marking, than the market leading embedded ARM CPUs. And to be clear, they're not comparing against obscure academic baselines, they specifically name targets here. ARM's Cortex M33, M45, and A5 class cores. The core metric here is operations per joule, which is a fair one to lead with if you're designing for battery life and then how much useful work you get per unit of energy. That's exactly the right question. Thing is here, Efficient also mentions instructions per second per watt, which gets closer to practical throughput per power figure. What Efficient CEO highlighted in my call with him, that their key metric, however, is tops per watt. And I'll be honest, Tops of Watt raises questions. Tops of Watt is usually an AI accelerator metric, not a general purpose CPU metric. And it's also precision dependent. The E1 supports FP32, sure, so it's at least using a real floating point pipeline. But comparing Tops of Watt for a general purpose CPU starts adrift into the kind of performance marketing we usually see from machine learning silicon, not embedded silicon. Most embedded benchmarks here are highly traditional, DMIPS or CoreMark. Most embedded processors don't even list tops. A lot of ARM's customers still rely on benchmarks like SPEC 2006, for example, and I'd really love to see that run here. Still, the range of efficient quotes, that 10 to 100 times energy efficiency, isn't necessarily implausible given how conventional CPUs burn power on data movement. To efficiency credit, they have silicon. They've apparently shown some internal benchmarks to customers and are getting ready to send developer kits out now. But until we see full workloads, until we see a pen independent validation, it's hard to know just how much of that advantage holds up across use cases. Embedded developers care about memory footprint, interrupt latency, reconfiguration time, I.O. contention, and software compatibility. Those will likely matter just as much as that efficiency claim. Now, let's talk about roadmap for a second, as the Electron E1 is the first step in efficiency roadmap. They say they're building out a full product family around this architecture with successors already in development. This includes a second generation E2 and something much, much bigger called the Photon P1. The plan is to scale the architecture up in performance, broaden support for more workloads, and offer both standalone SOCs and licensable IP. That's a familiar strategy. Design once, then apply it wherever the constraints match. For efficient, those constraints right now are very specific systems where energy matters more than peak throughput. Think aerospace, defense, industrial sensing, wearables, maybe even space systems. Anywhere that compute needs to live for a long time on limited power with minimal maintenance. What makes this moment interesting is that they've now crossed the line from research into product. It's not just a paper, it's not just a university prototype, it's a commercial chip. I've seen the early one with a compiler and a dev path. This is the E0 version I saw at CES only a few months ago. Now seeing it in person doesn't mean it'll win, but it does mean it's real, and at the very least, it'll be able to answer harder questions, such as whether the world is ready to adopt this new execution model, especially in the embedded market where reliability and predictability matter more than novelty. Compiler maturity, debug tooling, supply chain commitments, and production ramp, all of that still lies ahead for efficient. The fact that embedded players have to keep parts available for over a decade matters in a difficult market for a startup to play in, just in case they get acquired for the IP and stop making chips. I'm sure we've all heard of issues where certain modern aircraft still rely on processors from the 80s and 90s that have stopped production, and we now rely on stockpiles. But if it works, if it scales, then Efficient may have done something we haven't seen in a long, long time. Built a general purpose CPU, that didn't just evolve from the last one. It's an interesting take for sure, and I hope we'll get a deeper look into how the architecture works soon. But if you want me to go recompile Doom onto one of these things, please leave a comment down below, and we'll see if we can make that happen.